Okay, here we are uh, back at another podcast. And today we have a special, we have two separate couples and we're going to be talking about um, marriage in the midst of COVID-19. Uh, everything has had an impact during COVID. And as you can imagine, um, marriages obviously have had a great impact. So uh, thank you to the listeners that um, are listening to this. Whether you're married or not, maybe it would be a great thing for you to listen to and, and glean some wisdom here. Um, today we have Christina and Tim Mitchell. Uh, they are a newer married couple. Uh, Christina has been on our podcast before, and so we welcome her back. And we also have Chris and Amy Brown. Um, a married couple that have been married for a little bit longer than Christina and Tim. So uh, we might get a little bit of different opinions on, on how things roll there. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Christina and Tim, why don't you start and then we'll move over to Chris and Amy. All right, well, first of all, hello to our listeners and uh, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Tim Mitchell and I've been privileged to be married to Christina Mitchell. I work for our average department at Emmanuel Faith, and I've been blessed to be married to Christina for almost three years in August. Almost. Yeah, so um, you're so good at this. You have the voice for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so distracted. Um, no, so I'm Christina Mitchell, and, and yes, it's nice to be back. Um, yeah, it's always an honor to be here. Um, just be with you guys. Um, but I work at Classical Academy and um, I work in the front office and I do events and um, parent volunteer coordinating. So that's what we do. Okay. And you cook good food. And I cook good food. Yes. Very good food. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. One day. I don't forget food. I might forget yes. people, but I don't forget food. <laughs> no, sadly. Um, okay, Chris and Amy, tell us a little bit about yourselves. I'm Amy, and I'm married to Chris, and um, we've been married for 24 years. Um, we've been at <laughs> North Coast Church and living in the Oceanside area for the last 17 years. Uh, we have three kids. Uh, our oldest daughter just turned 19, and then we have our middle daughter who's uh, 17, and then our son who just promoted from eighth grade, and he's um, going to be 15 this next month. So. Wow. I would have gotten half of that right. So I'm glad she <laughs> took all the data and facts on that. I was like, oh yeah, we just had a birthday. Yep. So tell us about you, Chris. Um, I get to be a part of all that in an amazing way. And so yeah, 17 years in this area. Amy grew up in Encinitas down here. And so uh, we moved down from the LA area. This was sort of coming home for her. Um, I get to be on staff at North Coast Church and uh, absolutely love it, uh, going on our 17th year of doing that and having a blast. So it is a phenomenal time in our life right now. So it's fun to do a marriage thing because it's one of those, there's certain things people will ask you to speak on and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm good. <laughs> like yeah. if this was a podcast or something on organization and I'm like, oh, I'm terrible at this stuff. But <laughs> marriage right now, we're going to go, yeah, yeah, nailed it. I mean, God's blessing, God's favor, but man, we are in a great family marriage place right now. And that's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's me. Uh, with both of you, uh, uh, Tim and Christina, why don't you start on this? How did you meet your spouse? It's always fun to hear how people um, ran into each other or hated each other for a while till <laughs> realized he was a nice guy. <laughs> no. So how Not did you guys meet? <laughs> Um, a little backstory. I actually am newer to the area than she is. Yeah. I grew up as a missionary kid in Chile and moved here uh, for college. And I started going to Manual Faith, uh, got to know the area. And there was a, a gym night, a gym night they called it, uh, where we had volleyball and ultimate frisbee and all kinds of fun stuff. I don't do any of that. So <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> she enjoys people all the time, every time, every day. And I think I rode bike to church that day. And um, you can take it from there. Uh, I think I did it already. I, I saw a friend who, I'm we're like a foot of heart like he is tall and so <laughs> the bike was tall and I didn't know it was his so I borrowed it because it was this pretty color I rode it and I fell 
And then that's literally how we met. Cause he's like, do you need help? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> thought it was her. Sorry. <laughs> and so yeah, that, that's how we met. <laughs> so he came up to you, right? Or you came up to him. I came up to her. I was literally she was on, on the, the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the grass field right across, like right in front of the gym. Uh -huh. I just attempted, I wanted to ride it around. It didn't even work out. I just got up and it fell on the other side. Like that is not a joke. <laughs> that's just an unfortunate story. <laughs> so it just, yeah. That's it ended my... well. It ended really well. It's the best time. You know, yeah. best story I've ever heard about taking someone's bike and ending right. up getting a husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Great. Not Great. hope for a friendship to develop from there for three years and then the transition after. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you dated for three years. We were friends no. for three years. Yes. And then <laughs> dated for I mean, a, year, so that, a year, year and a half. And a half. <laughs> okay. Yes. Hannah can fill you in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah, from day one we were on a hike and I was like, hmm, I think something's going on there. Yeah. And it was so cool watching it from that day to your wedding day and now now. Yeah. <laughs> Getting invited to podcasts. So <laughs> <You're> yeah. <laughs> Moving up in the world. I know. Yeah. And what about Chris and Amy? We met. We met at a barbecue in Fallbrook, actually. It was kind of a church family barbecue. They weren't part of the church, but they were invited. And uh, I was the one doing the barbecuing and hanging out. And we fell madly in love the first time we laid eyes on each other. I proposed to her that night. We got <laughs> married the next day. Um, no, actually, it was just a fun, it was a fun night with other young adults at that time. And then uh, about five, six months later, we're both at Azusa Pacific University. She's a senior. I'm a freshman, even though I'm two years older than her. That's all you need to know about my college education. <laughs> and, uh, and we meet the very first night of school. They had a thing called the freshman mugging where everyone got root beer floats in a mug and a big block party. Yes. And I'm just kind of being the 23 year old freshman feeling out of place, cruising around and we bumped into each other. We hadn't talked. And I'm like, whoa, you're the girl from the barbecue in Fallbrook. And that kind of started at least recognition. Mm. She used to cut hair on campus, $5 a haircut. She would have guys literally lined up at her door <laughs> to see Amy. You had to take a number and wait for your number to be called. And, uh, and uh, so one night uh, I called her up and said, if I had any guts, I'd ask you out on a date, but I don't. So can I just get a haircut? And I laughed because I was like, what do I say to that? And she's like, so are you asking for a haircut? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so I showed up at her place. She fit me in the time schedule and she took the squirt bottle and she started running her fingers through my hair. And I'm like, that. <laughs> yeah. rest is history. Yep. We dated for about a year and a half, two years, and then got married in August of 95. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So cool. All right. So just kind of, Diving in, we're doing this whole season on navigating life in COVID because it's changed literally everything for us. And one thing that it's changed a lot is marriage and the dynamics within marriage. Can you guys talk about just maybe in your own marriage or, um, I know all of you guys are people people, so you've, you've interacted a lot with other people. And what are some of the changes that are happening for marriages and in marriages right now because of COVID? I know one of the things for us, for sure, is that this is the most time we spent together, like nonstop, without interaction with people. So for, I remember, um, yeah, it was when it hit me, like, oh, it's just you and I, like, literally, <laughs> like, you know, you usually say that it's like, it's us and, you know, the world and we serve and whatnot, but like, that moment, it was just us. Um, and so that was huge in a sense of getting to know each other in a different way. And like, again, we, we are still newlyweds, you know, three years is still fresh. And so there was our work habits, like we work together, like in our dining area, you know, that's where we work all of a sudden and seeing how we interact. And um, I think that was bigger than I thought it would be like in 
taking in and who he is and how he is and seeing how he interacted with his coworkers. You know, like I don't often see that. Um, so that was really neat. And I think that's the same for at least people who are our friends who are also, you know, married for five years and mm -hmm. less of, wow, this is the most time we spent. Like, what does, like, what are we learning in this? And um, thankfully, honestly, I don't think I've heard that negative, like, oh, this is awful. Like what Chris said, like, this is awesome. Like, this has been really healthy in the sense of, it's a reminder that we are in the same team. We are in this together and like, I'm not against you and you're not against me and this is good. You know, I think that there are a lot of refreshing times in that of like, we never really spend breakfast time together. <laughs> like we're not morning people. So going to work, it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> See you like tonight. So that's been really sweet. So yeah, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, it's been, we don't have kids, so we have a different dynamic. So I'd, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more from, yeah. uh, from Chris and me. Yeah. Um, it's been an amazing time to pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. um, we've all been forced to, and we've all been uh, talking about the changes in our lives and things that are gonna continue in our lives. But it's been an amazing time to actually stop and pause mm -hmm. and pray to God together, stop and pause and share devotion in the morning when we're having breakfast, which you don't usually do together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, things like that, that are rhythms in our lives that we would love to continue the rest of our lives and to share with one another and mm -hmm. um, to learn from other couples that have been doing that longer, that have rhythms that are fully in place and mm -hmm. I think the rhythm aspect has been a, feels off rhythm many times because we're not used to it but that's been something I think that has been a big shift for our lives. Mm -hmm. Are you both still at home? Has any changes happened? Are you back at EFCC or well classical is probably not open over the summer but uh, yeah. I work in the office in the past couple weeks. We had, I like, we did eighth grade promotion. So we were busy with that. Um, we have like book drop off and all that. So I, I was involved in that and we're still figuring out um, along with other schools across the state, the nation, figuring out like, how does this work out um, and being in the office. So I think in the near future, there's more, like I've been going in the, you know, in the mornings just to do stuff or, I, I do events, so just clean storage kind of stuff. Um, whereas, yeah, we there's really no concrete answer yet, honestly. We don't know. But as of now, we've been going in here and, here there, and there for small things. Yeah. Like working from home. I have a room in the back that I've been hauled away now. So we, we have separate workspaces, which is yeah. a big blessing. Kim, I love what you said about um, like the rhythms and learning from couples that have been married a little bit longer, because this is a really cool opportunity. I mean, for couples, but also like individuals to figure out what rhythms like do I want in my life right now? Cause we have this opportunity to slow down a little bit and we have this opportunity to really just evaluate where we're at and like where we want to be headed and what it, what it's going to take to get there. Um, but yeah, no, I love that. I think that's really cool um, for this season, something to like remember and, um, something to take away from it. Chris and Amy, do you have anything else to add to that? Well, we definitely have had more family time together, a more time mm. as a couple, um, probably the most we've had in a really long time. Mm. Um, weekends together where we're, you know, watching mm. church on the couch together as a family, which when he's working, usually he's gone most of the weekend. So this has been kind of a treasure for us. Um, just a sweet time. And just more time with our family, with our kids. You know, we've had lots of um, game nights and um, movie, nights. movie nights and stuff like that. So with our teenagers being at the ages that they are, they're out a lot. They're working. Um, they're with their friends. So it's nice to have them home with us mm -hmm. and not us be the bad guys saying, no, <laughs> you know, we're like, sorry. We realize <laughs> so, this season finds so many couples and families in different 
um, because families mm -hmm. with, a, you know, five kids under the age of six, oh, oh bless you. Yes. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, yeah. I know that you love your kids, mm -hmm. but you hate this time. I mean, that's what's different. If this would have happened 12 years ago, yeah. I don't know what I would have done. Yeah. If I would have oh. had to watch Frozen 20 times a day <laughs> for three months or any Disney movie, I'm done. You know, our kids are older, so we're watching series that were like Born Identity. You know, we're watching cool yeah. series that I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, if this would have happened, and I think that's what's shown right now. I think this season has really shown where your family and where your marriage is. And just because it's a bad season for you doesn't mean you're in a bad marriage. Part of that is you're just in a bad place in life where you've got small kids, even the best of marriages it's not great when you have five kids under the age of six. It just isn't. Um, two kids under the age of six. You're like, our marriage is good, but we're just getting by. And sometimes just getting by is success in the season that you're in. And you got to understand that. Um, but I think that's what's shown. I think the shelter at home in the last couple months has really shown either the strengths or the weaknesses in a marriage and in family. Um, we don't have enough counselors, even though we have 17 on staff to deal with the marriage counseling right now. Um, we are backed up and, and we have no spaces open. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the fall in 07, 08, 09, the financial collapse. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of this, you know, conflict is going to reveal what comfort conceals. Mm -hmm. And when we're in financial comfort or we're in our own work, we've got our movies to go to, our golf we can go to, our hobbies to go to, that comfort conceals you know, really where our marriage is at. You take away those comforts, you add the stress of shelter at home, we're not shopping, we're not golfing, we're not going to movies, we're not going out to eat, we're just doing this, and conflict is gonna reveal, okay, this is where our marriage is really at. And right now, people are really seeing, wow, this is amazing, or wow, we need work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's like exactly why we wanted to do this episode, because in marriage mentors or counselors, different people that Tammy and I know, pretty early on we were talking about how like they're all so busy right now. Like everybody is calling for their phone number and um, it's awesome for couples to really like dive into that and um, go to counseling. Um, and in this season, like why, why is it important to prioritize marriage, but also how can somebody prioritize their marriage in this season? Hey, Kristen, can I ask you something on this? Because I think this would be something that the listeners might, um, and it's something that you said, Tim, because you don't have kids. And so not having those people there, your kids are older, so they're there. But there's, I know for, for me and my husband, we're somewhat of an empty nest. But for some reason, when COVID hit, everybody flew home. Yeah. And we, it was yeah. like, Escondido called, thought we had a leak in our water because there was so much water because everybody's showering. And yeah. But there was, so there was this time that as a couple, mm -hmm. we would go out and do projects in the garden just to get away from all the 20 somethings that are all around. And we love them, but what I, my point is you still have to be intentional to build into your marriage in whatever place you're in, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, intentionally. It is the most intentional. I mean, outside of your relationship with God, there is nothing more important than your marriage. If you're single outside of your relationship with God, there's nothing more important than your personal purity and your character. Um, because when you're married, uh, it's going to affect your vocation. It's going to affect your calling. And those can be different. It's going to affect your ministry. It's going to affect the kids. It's going to affect the home. Um, you can have an incredibly successful job, but if your marriage is bad, you're not good. I don't care what your title is and I don't care what you're making. Likewise, you could be in a place right now where you're furloughed, you're laid off, finances are a wreck, but if your marriage is good, you're okay. You're gonna get through this. And we have counseled couples that have had seven figure incomes and were the most bitter broken people because this wasn't good. And we've had so many talks with people who in their forties with three kids have had to move back in with mom and dad. And that, that's hard. Um, because of loss of job, because of downsizing a company, because they weren't able, they weren't marketable, and uh, for whatever reasons. And I ask him, and we'll, we'll, we'll call him Bob. Bob, how you doing? He goes, I'm doing good. And I go, no, Bob, I know times are tough. How are you doing? 
And I never forget, it happened right out here by one of the fountains and our property, one of these big rocks that we didn't want to pay to move. So we just drilled a hole through it. And now they're in the middle of our property. And I was sitting in front of one of the big rocks. And I said, I said, Bob, honestly, how are you doing? And I remember he put his hand on my shoulder and he goes, Chris, Julie and I are doing really well. Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly what he meant as a guy. You know my finances. You know I don't have a job. You know I've moved in with my in-laws at the age of 46 with my kids. But Julie and I are doing well. And, and, he, and that's all I need to know. He's like, then I'm going to be okay. Because if this is good, we're good. If this isn't good, then no matter what is good, I'm not good. And that's why right now, if you find yourself in a place and go, oh, I can't wait for the doors to open up. I can't wait for the season. I got to get out. This isn't good then you've got to prioritize this because there will be worse seasons to come and you don't want to get into a good season and hide the most important thing in your life that's not doing well. Okay, that was a rant. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good rant. <laughs> yeah, and I think we brought up so many times, you spend so much time together, you think, okay, time equals connection time equals growth but just because we have all this time doesn't mean we're growing doesn't mean we're connecting doesn't mean doesn't mean much you know and if anything we have to set aside more time now to do important things or else we're just hanging out together and that's it you know and yeah i mean some of them are really easy like we love food. Like spending time together, really enjoying food together is awesome. Um, going on walks around our community, getting to know our area better, that we drive by all the time, but actually walking through and exercising, getting fresh air, um, doing calls with family. Mm -hmm. um, riding bikes. That, riding bikes, not yet. <laughs> it's been locked away. But, um, <laughs> Tim, what you just said, I think is so essential for all of your listeners to hear because it's just, it's critical. Yeah. Time spent doesn't mean love. Um, mm -hmm. The more time you put oil and water together, it's still going to stay separated. It's not going to mix. The more time you put gas and fire together, the bigger the flame. Um, mm -hmm. Some of you right now, you may feel like, man, I feel like we've been in a three round fight and time means now we're in a 15 round fight. Mm -hmm. So time doesn't equal love. And just because you're under one roof more, could mean worse. We've got more flames. We feel more separate. Now it has just put us face to face with how lonely and how bad this is. And so, yeah, Tim, I thought that was just genius. The solution isn't time. What you do with that time is going to be the solution. Yeah. What are some ideas that you guys have for that and just prioritizing your marriage right now? Well, for us, it's about not being selfish because there's times where I feel like I want to do what I want to do. You know, it's she's really agenda. talking about me. No, she's no, taking no, it. No, really I'm talking not, about I'm talking me. About me. <laughs> um, I think there's uh, that, that uh, sin nature in us and that human nature in us that can say I deserve to be happy. I deserve to get what I want. And um, it's a daily choice to say, no, my job is to love and to serve and to um, give to the other person, put their needs above my own. It doesn't come naturally. It's a choice that we have to make. Um, and so when you feel like you only want your own way, my first thing is like, pray, like God, give me the desires to know, you know, what I should be doing for my husband and how I can serve him in a way that is meaningful to him, not just meaningful to me, but to him and speak his love language and share in the things that he likes to do. Because in doing that, I get what I need because I get that connection. I get that um, solid, um, just confidence knowing that we are good together yeah. and, and doing what we know we should be doing. And, and I, I hope some of your listeners out there that just rolled their eyes through this I mean, just, oh, such an unfair, ignorant statement that Amy just made. I hope you get the brilliance of this woman and the depth of wisdom in that. Because when you ask most spouses to pray, when you ask a wife to pray, what is she praying for? She's praying that her husband changes. That's what she's praying for. She's praying that God gets a big stick and whacks that boneheaded idiot into submission. 
when Amy started praying, Amy started praying for her desires to change and her wants. And it was so contrary to what self wants to do. And yet in that, that was, I saw that change. I saw that she was out serving me. She was out loving me. She wasn't doing it for this purpose, but it built up so much guilt and conviction in my life that I'm like, dang it. Now I better start loving and serving her because now I'm looking like a really, really bad husband in the midst of this. And I already knew I didn't have a passing grade. And I think that's Ephesians 5, 21 on. Um, there's been a verse in the Bible so widely used against women out of con context. Wives, submit to your husbands. You know, they forget. That's verse 22. Verse 21 says, husband and wives submit one to another. Mm -hmm. And this is what submit says. How does she put me first? How does she do things my way? And how does she serve me? That's her job. And then the next five verses say, and Chris, your job is to go, how do you put her first? How do you think her way? And how do you serve her? And if you have two people that are trying to outserve each other, you're not going to mind the hours at home right now. But if you've got two people trying to change each other, a, a wise philosopher said, time doesn't equal love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. Okay. I mean, service is such a, it opens up love in amazing ways. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> my wife is a servant and a people person. And you take away the people. <laughs> you take away the people. <laughs> and how does she serve? So, um, when this all first started, we had a little bit of a, uh, a coming together, a talk. Uh, she wasn't, we had to actually talk about bringing people into our household. and It was for our Bible study, Hannah. Was, <laughs> I was like, okay, so like it was March 13th when they told us like, oh, lockdown, at least for work. And I remember telling Tim like, I can't have my Bible study, right? Like, we all fit in our living room. Like, we have a small home. <laughs> He's like, actually. I'm like, no, that's not what we vowed. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what I was trying to get at is um, figuring out ways to serve each other. Um, she always finds ways to do that. Uh, for me, I'm trying to figure out, okay, we're both here together. Things that I've decided to go ahead and go for don't look, look around the house right now, but our dishes and the bed. And they're small things, but for her, it just opens up uh, the fruit and the, the sweetness of, of life. And um, those are the things that I may look at it and be like, eh, I can wait till later. But those are things that go such a long way and just give joy in life and yeah. happiness in ways that we don't understand. Yeah, and like what Amy said, of just that pursuit of like, okay, how are you feeling? Because um, you're two very different people. Like, we're very, very different people. And just that, you know, like, even, I mean, even hearing 24 years later, there's this, there, it, it's a day at a time of pursuit. And it's the blessing of marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, just pursuing of like, okay, how, how are you this morning? You know, like, how is your soul? Um, and it's a, such a, I think this has been such a sweet time of asking more questions intentionally um, because you can actually sit and listen more and observe more and take in more without um, interrupted, you know, like with the, without interruptions. So I think that's been really neat. Um, and for us of like, I'm such an ex like extrovert and he's such an introvert and just, you know, realizing those intense differences and finding like, the sweet, you know, the, the, the desire to still love each other is just so sweet and right. Like praying for each other and just pursuing each other's heart is, has been really encouraging for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have an extrovert and an introvert over here too. And I think that that's hard um, for those of us that are extroverts mm -hmm. and, and then to have your partner who's an introvert, this is, his or her dream and yet but it, it's a sweet sweet time too how um is there anything that a couple can do when they feel burnt out on a marriage i be 
not necessarily introvert, extrovert. But like you said, Chris, some, some marriages are not thriving during this time. And in fact, it's blown up. We've heard of, of pretty crazy stuff. How, how can you put those stops? How can you help with that um, so you don't get burnt out or, you know, yeah. it's constant, you know, ha being at home 24 seven with someone? How, what would either of you suggest, either couple? Well, I mean, first of all, burnout in marriage, I would say, isn't a bad thing. I don't recommend it. If your marriage never has to go through it, that's great. But sometimes we get to that point and it's an indicator light on a dashboard that was just blinking and now it's solid red and it makes you pull over and do some changes before you blow the whole engine and have to get a new vehicle. And so a lot of times if you're listening to this and this maybe this podcast, um, this Zoom conference is, is filling you with more despair. Um, it's not a bad thing. Uh, you've just got a light on the dash. It goes, you know what? We've got to fix this. And by fixing it, it means you can't do what you've been doing to get to this point because that's what got you to this point. And to understand then, go back and do marriage a biblical way. It's Ephesians 5, that marriage, uh, marriage comes down to love and love is a choice. Love is not an emotion. Love is not a feeling. It is a choice. So if you're in a marriage right now where you don't feel love, you don't feel like being together, you don't feel respect, that's okay. Now make the biblical mandate to go, I'm gonna choose love, I'm gonna choose respect, and I'm gonna start doing this. And here's the beauty, the heart will follow where the head goes. Um, when you make your mind up to it, the heart will follow. And you're like, oh, is that in Ephesians 5? No, we found that in The Bachelor um, and The Bachelorette. <laughs> we have found that in every single season, you take a house full of people that choose to fall in love and they all fall in love. There has never been an episode of a secular TV show where they go, oh, no one likes each other. Let's start over with a new batch. Because the game is, I'm going to fall in love. And within a matter of weeks, everybody has fallen in love. All they are doing, they are putting into practice 1 Corinthians 13, and they're putting into practice Ephesians 5. Love is a choice, it's not a feeling. Choose to submit, choose to love, choose to go down that path. Ephesians 5 tells the guys, here's how you present your wife, without stain, without wrinkle, without blemish. The beauty of that means is your bride is wrinkled, your bride is stained, and your bride has blemishes. Your job is not to see that, not to point it out. You choose to focus on loving her and the positive and fulfilling her, and you will present to her as a radiant, a radiant bride. My job is never to point out any blemish, any wrinkle, anything in Amy. She doesn't have them anyways. My job is to point out, dude, here's who you are. Um, if you want to spend your marriage focusing on the negative, I promise your marriage will be negative. It just will. That is human nature, and it won't work. So again, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, love is a choice. Ephesians 5 says, act out that choice regardless of the wrinkles, the blemishes, the spots. And by the way, this is how God loved you. He didn't wait for you to get beautiful. He loved you and your wrinkle, your blemishes, and your stains. And if you like his love, you better love his son or daughter that way. And I think that's what I would say. For some of you in your prayers, stop praying to God and start praying to your heavenly father-in-law, and it may change some of your attitude and heart. Um, when I stop praying, dear heavenly father, but I pray, dear father-in-law, what I'm saying is, ooh, he knows how I've treated his daughter today. Does he really want to talk to me or not? Um, he knows how you've treated his son today. Does he really want to talk to you or not? So just start with that mindset of making the choice and the heart will follow. That's good. That's good. There's a lot. I'm sorry. I know I talked a lot. <laughs> so I get paid to talk a lot. Sorry. That's what I get paid to do. Do either of you have anything to add to that? I think one thing that has been interesting for myself in, you know, whether that's getting together or bringing people, um, and Chris would say, say it of like, if you're focusing on the negative, it, it doesn't have to be in your marriage, you know, like during this time, if you're mm -hmm. just so upset and livid because you can't do what you want, then you won't find the goodness in it. Because there's so much more into it that we can't control. Like that is just life as is. And so I think there's so much more into it of 
what are you choosing to see? What are you choosing to hear right now? And you will, you will find the goodness in that. So I think, I think that's just what came into mind when he said that. And yeah, I, when I look at this and is there anything a couple can do when they feel burnt out on a marriage, we have friends that are dear friends that it's an iron sharpens iron friendship that, mm-hmm. you know, talk to them too and say, Hey, look, we're, we're struggling here. How do you guys, somebody that, you know, will give you wisdom, godly wisdom and, and talk to somebody and have them come alongside and, and be praying for you too, because your dear friends obviously care about your marriage. They care about each other. So um, sharing that with somebody I think is, is important. Chris said something earlier that some people might be listening to this and realizing they, they have a check engine light on and, um, and agree that that's a good thing to go. Okay. There's something that we can move forward and change. It's nothing is perfect. And um, just moving forward, forward through those bumps I could I've been married 33 years and there's been some bumpy times but huge blessing to to be with the same man who I is just an amazing person for me and hopefully he's not here but he would say the same thing um but yeah we talk about the bumps um but to know that that as you go through those bumps, it gets better. And then there's that hindsight to go, remember when, when this happened and, and we sat down, we intentionally were praying over this, this. It's just such a, a, a neat thing to, to be able to look back at that, that not the lie is everybody else's marriage is, is rosy and every, every, everybody else is having great family time and, and having board games or having prayer time. And then there's a couple out there that's gone, we don't do any of this where, you know, but you've got to start somewhere to intentionally pour in like Mm -hmm. what Chris said about Amy praying for herself to change herself, to be the better wife for Chris. That's, that's huge. I hope the listeners heard that versus Lord change him, you know, Mm -hmm. or change her. Um, That's Amy. One thing I wanted to add on to what you said earlier about talking to a friend. Um, for our listeners, if you don't have like a friend who is married or um, is a believer or one good rule of thumb is find somebody who has a marriage that you want yours to look like. So maybe it's somebody, an older family member, or maybe it's, it's somebody else in your life. Maybe not, they're not a close friend, but really, um, making sure that they have a marriage that you want yours to look like. Yeah. And I just would add, you know, I think Tammy, you said it well, you know, I don't want people to sit here and go, Oh, look at the pastor and his wife from this church. And they got all together. Our talk and our experience right now comes from 23 years ago, our conversation of divorce, mm-hmm. we were done. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we train wrecked the first year of this marriage. Um, mm-hmm. We were done. And uh, I didn't want to love her anymore. I didn't want to spend time with her anymore. She was so frustrated with me. We didn't do what you and Hannah just talked about. We didn't confide in anybody because I was embarrassed to tell them I'm a year into marriage and we failed at it. Um, So we just talked about divorce and what it's going to look like. Um, And I thank God that looking back now, um, we did get some help and to get through that time and go, wait a second, instead of throwing it away, what if you start doing it different? And so what we love today is um, it hasn't been like, oh, it's been a happily ever after marriage. I was working and living down in the inner city. Um, We just didn't have finances. We had a one room apartment. A big night out was an Arby's five for five dollars night. And and we were done. And uh, what God has done in our life since then by following this. So I feel like we're people that should have the before and after picture. Um, And just realize, man, I get it. I get it's hard. I get when you want to throw in the towel. And I get when you go, see, that's the point. I don't want to love her. I don't want to be in love with them. Well, I get that. We were there. My point is God can change that heart where you don't want anything else but to be in love with them. I promise you. Our God, our God's reputation is that he does great things with dead things. That's pretty much what put him on the map. That's what he's known for. 
So the more dead your marriage is, the more possibility God has to do something amazing with it. I think a lot of times we see these difficulties as negative, but in, really in retrospect, when you look back and you think of the times where you had these really hard times, these bumps in the road, or you know where your marriage is on the rocks, and coming through and having those tough conversations, I think what really got us through that time initially was we both just started sharing why we don't like each other, what were what things that we had expected marriage would be like or that each other would be like, and we weren't getting those needs met. And I think being able to share those things, we didn't know at the time, but really we were sharing really what our desires are and what our expectations are. And we hadn't really done that before. And now we gave the other person the opportunity to be able to fulfill those needs and just to know what those needs were specifically mm -hmm. and to be able to like work through that and to choose to do what that person really liked. It was something that was tangible to them um, that showed them love or showed them respect. And so for us working through that during the time seemed like a bad thing that it was, oh, it's such a bad time of our marriage. But really that's the best time of your marriage because you're really learning what the other person likes, what they don't like, how they like you to act in a certain situation or not, um, what makes them feel comfortable or secure. And so being able to share those things, those are things that bring you to a more mature love. And so even though you might think your marriage is in a really hard place right now and in a bad place, choosing to share what things could be different or how you would like it to be different is the best gift you can give your spouse. And in that, it's going to bring you to another newer um, place in your relationship, which is better. And so even though it seems bad, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. I am. Um, I remember my oldest daughter was talking to my husband about relationships and he made a comment. If I was in this marriage for myself, it would be long gone, but I'm in this marriage for your mother and I, but it's your mother that my focus is and her focus is me. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought that was, I said, yeah, that's right. That's true. Because it's not all me because that, that just doesn't work, but it's just what you were just saying, Amy. And, and then you can, you have that propensity to go back that way. And then you have to regroup with, you know, put the mirror down. That is not the focus of me, myself and I, it's, it's our spouses and then kids. Um, what final word would you leave the listeners today with? There's something that we haven't covered. Is there um, something that there's a lot we haven't covered? We could go for hours. I know we still have three more hours to go, but um, I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just burdened for the people that are out there right now during this that, that could be just somewhat struggling. Mm -hmm. Well, we've really been talking about prioritizing and I think keeping the family as you know first god and then your husband and then your kids and then your work and i think when you keep those things in in the proper place that they should be in it seems to all work out it really does and that's you know christine and tim uh, it's great to see you guys doing that um early on uh, i i can vouch there's many marriages that haven't started off that way learned it through the bumps what it was supposed to look like but way to go you guys you're a great example for that you know to to have that intentional god first spouse and then in the intentional prayer time a couple that prays together goodness gracious stays together i you know how can you how can you not it's um, that that heartfelt time and and for those people out there that might be going I can't I can't even think to do that mm -hmm. well pray and ask God how to think about doing that because it's it's amazing it's it's just another adjunct to a marriage that is just huge it's it's um, so so important so anybody well, else yeah, I was going to say, I didn't really come from that, from that kind of household that people were praying from the heart. That sounds really harsh. Um, yeah. Um, so 
I think it was very important, or it is very important to, to do that on your own. And so it, it, you don't have to be in a marriage for you to pursue the Lord and cry out to him. That's you and him um, on your own. And so I think that's what this, that's the only way <laughs> and reason this is working out. That's for sure. Um, and that, yeah, I think that's just really important for the listeners to hear that. Because if I were a listener in from my high school days and you tell me that, oh, just, you know, pursue someone and pray together, like, oh, that's funny. So mm -hmm. I, I think the encouragement of it starts with you and your desire to pursue him and he's there for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just really important to share. And like when Hannah said, um, I do, I do feel, I, I can't imagine the, the listeners who are afraid and fearful of this time and feeling alone. Um, Cause, but you're not, it, it, I can't imagine how intense that feels. And I have friends as students, um, girls, you know, who do feel that way and, and you look at them and you're like, you have it all together. You're going to a four year university, you're doing this, 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 and you feel that way. Um, and just that encouragement, one, you're not alone, but that there are people around you that you can reach out to. Mm -hmm. You have alternatives and, and you, you, you know, you're listening to this podcast for a reason and these women are here for you to help you out there's a reason why they've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just a really important thing to say to mm -hmm. all the listeners. Thanks, Christina. Mm -hmm. Chris Amy, anything else? No, I mean, I don't want to diminish or negate where anybody's at right now, but if you've listened to this and said, well, that's good for you guys, but you just don't know where my marriage is at, you don't understand how far we've gone, there's no hope here, then I just want to challenge you, then you don't really know our God. Mm -hmm. um, again our god does incredible things with dead things and mm -hmm. that's the purpose of his son that's what the cross is there for mm -hmm. if we just needed self-help if we just needed a book to make things better he would have left us a book he left us a cross to show us some things can't be healed they need to be dead and buried and resurrected and that's mm -hmm. what he's in the business of doing that's not just lives that's not just sin that's marriages as well mm -hmm. amen well, thank you, the Mitchells and the Browns, uh, for being a part of this. It's, uh, I know that somebody out there will, will definitely be blessed by this. One thing that, well, last, we always have a question that we like to end our podcast with. And, you know, last year it was about joy. Well, this year, this season, it's what's, the, what's a recent challenge that you've overcome? So if each of you could think of something that uh, you recently overcame and um, could share that on top of just opening up about your marriage, that would just end the things. <laughs> Pertaining to marriage? Sure, let's go with that. Oh. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a suggestion, I was asking. <laughs> oh, gosh. Or if you, we just, it was broader than that, so, but if. Hmm. <laughs> something that you've overcome a challenge that you've overcome it's funny i just took that to marriage this is going to sound so arrogant i just took that to marriage and i'm looking at you going i don't know what we've i feel like we've worked so hard for 15 years that these last eight years have been so nice to enjoy the fruit and the benefit of that mm -hmm. i mean what we've had to overcome marriage i don't have a good marriage one right now maybe that's it I'm not sensitive and I'm clueless to what I need to overcome. <laughs> she's probably got a list. No, I don't. She's like, list. I got a list that you should overcome. And I'm like, okay, that's what I need. I think not taking things personal. I think it's easy to like make the list of what you did again and what you're doing wrong. And I think not taking things personal has been a huge thing for me in that, um, you know, people do things just because they do things. It's not because they're trying to hurt you. They're not trying to do it to hurt to you know, make you feel bad. You know, exactly. he leaves clothes on the tub and doesn't put them away. He's not doing that on purpose to hurt me. That's where they go. And so, <laughs> <laughs> things they go. So it's one of those things that you have to choose in your mind. And I feel like uh, over the years that I've learned to choose, you know, what things are really worth 
you know, mentioning and what things aren't because there's going to be a lot of stuff like that builds up over the years and you get to choose. And so I feel like through the years I have chosen to not let those things go. You guys have just witnessed the perfect microcosm of our entire marriage. <laughs> Chris what, do you have? Chris, what do you have to overcome? Oh, no, really nothing. Amy, what do you have to overcome? Well, this, 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 this. Like, hey, that's why this works. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Why have we overcome? This is a big question. Oh, man. Just while we're thinking, Hannah, Hannah or Tammy, could you share something to get our brains <laughs> going? Because like, it's one of those, like what Chris said, of like, we're thankful, but we don't want to sound awful. That like, oh, no. we haven't overcome anything. <laughs> but at the same time, we did mean what we shared of like, this has been a sweet time. And we're excited for what God has in store for us for the next several decades, you know. The, but the past few years has been a joy. It's you know, it has its own bumps, but we have a gracious God that heals and guides us and is so merciful and gracious towards us in our own, you know, hearts and selfishness and whatnot. And that has been great. Um, but so I'm like, wait, what do you mean by that question? Because that's a really big question. <laughs> you mean right now or in general? <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's true. What I, okay, this is my overcome. I ran with my husband. That is a big deal. <laughs> like, don't run. And he's really fast. So I remember Hannah texted me like, I'm so proud of you. And then I'm like, well, <laughs> this is what the world's come to. Christina's running. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, that was a challenge that you yeah. yeah. It has to be more than that. There better be more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. And I think with all of you, it's it's very interesting that um, you are not the subject of your lives. That it, God is the leading role. Um, I had a we have um, a pastor friend that comes and prays with us, and he said once, um, if God's the leading, is God the leading role in your life, and you're the supporting cast, or are you the leading role, and God's the supporting cast? your choices will be incredibly different. Mm -hmm. And um, all four of you have, God is the leading role, looking to God in your, in your marriages, in your choices, in your decisions, in picking up Chris's laundry that's in the wrong place, things like that, <laughs> riding bikes. So, um, so to say I've overcome it, you're, the focus, is you're still looking at, at, at our Heavenly Father so that it, I, I have nothing to overcome because I'm looking to Him to help me get through that. I, I don't know. Okay, Hannah, am I done? Going back. So for any of our listeners, if you guys have a question about this or just want to talk about it a little bit more, you can reach out to us at info at amc-ca.com. Or our phone number, Tammy, I know it now, 760-741-9796. Tammy, would you like to give the phone number? I'm like, okay, this is a challenge. You need to learn the phone number. <laughs> <laughs> but I got it now. We're good. And for our listeners, just thank you so much for tuning in. I, I really hope you took something away from this episode. I know I did. Um, yeah, and I'm very grateful for these couples and um, just their transparency and what they were willing to share. And um, yeah, and for our listeners, if you could leave us a rating or review, just letting us know what was helpful, what topics are helpful, what you want to know more about, that would be actually a huge help for us. So we know how to better um, communicate and serve you guys. And if you're on Instagram, if you could take a screenshot of where you're watching this episode and share it and tag us at Alternative MC. That would be awesome as well. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.